What? So would you want to pray for us, Jeff? Let it get us going? Sure. Yeah. Lord Jesus, we are gathered here in your house to honor you and to study your word. So Father, I ask that you would make illuminate this word that we're going to study and let it come alive to us, not only in our minds, but in our hearts and our souls. And let it make a difference in how we live. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 August 2nd. This is August already, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You know, there's a spot on a tree across the street from us. And it's already turning yellow. Don't shoot the messenger. What'd you say? There's a spot <laughs> on a tree across the street from us. It's a, I forget what kind of you tree. You said shoot the messenger? It's not that big. It's already turning yellow. I know. Oh, don't. Oh, don't? I know. Didn't we just... Too soon. Did we just turn our thermostats down? Like last week or something? <laughs> Seems like. I don't know. Are we? You can't tell by me. I've been sweating. So Every time I come in here, I'm sweating. Really? And I know it's cold. <coughs> Feeling the heat. Well, I have a a tooth thing going on, and it's been going on for a little That's while now, and. Ooh. And I, I, I've been wanting to call my dentist to see if they're back in yet, so, so I don't know. You know, I had a this one time, and my cheek swelled up about the size of a tennis ball. Yeah, I, 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 I a shot in the butt. It's done that some a couple of times. Antibiotic, heavy duty, and within like <clears throat> 12 hours, the thing was gone away. No. Oh. Then they gave me a bunch of those antibiotics, you know. That's why I got my dentures, I got tired of that stuff. Yeah. I had horrible, horrible oh, issues with my teeth. Yeah. So if they take this one, there'd be number eight gone, so. Yeah. So. And then I know I've got a cavity that was supposed to have been filled a few months ago. Do you have all your teeth pretty much? Top ones. Yeah. Well, uh, except for the wisdom up top. But then three on this side and two over here. You know, yeah, so. I got some bad. Oops. That's all right. That's the car we're looking for right there. Oh, the oats? Yeah. Yep. They're the, uh, yeah. They're the, they're the time clock. Mm -hmm. So today's message is a uh, uh, Christ message to the churches. We're talking about uh, uh, Revelation chapter 2 today. And today we're talking, it's a, uh, in four sections. It's a, instead of three, our normal three section. Yeah, because uh, we're talking about Ephesus, Smyrna, per, per, Pergamos, and Thyatira. Is that right, guys? Is that right? Thyatira. Thyatira. Yeah, perfect. And Pergamos. Is that right, Pastor? Pergamos. Smyrna. In Ephesus, I'm sure about Ephesus. <laughs> well, I don't know. I'm not sure about Ephesus, but. Because we're taking the seven churches, you know, the four that today and, and, the, and the following three next week. So that's why it says part one. So. So this lesson is the first of two that explore letters from the Lord sent by John to the seven churches of Asia Minor. The structures of the letters are similar, starting with com commendation, moving to rebuke, and ending in a promise with occasional variations. Uh, students will be challenged to hear the Spirit's message to each church and apply it both individually and corporately. We've got to take these messages uh, to heart, don't we? Though so separated by time and distance from the context of the original readers, Time is like 2,000 years ago, right? And distance is like the other side of the world. Uh, the message of the letters still resonate clearly. Consider how the message to each church can be applied today. Historical literary background. The seven churches were located in the seven cities in Asia Minor, uh, which is now Western Turkey. 
Uh, the letters are similar in form and classify as epistles or letters, uh, much like those we read from Paul, you know, Paul's letters to, to Corinth and, mm -hmm. and Ephesus and, and, and the such, right? They each would have been circulated among the churches so that the recipients would read each other's mail. Unlike today, that's kind of against the law to read our, our neighbor's mail, isn't it? <laughs> you know. But here they were encouraged, you know, to, to read what's going on. It's like a, it's like a news, isn't it? Right. The news around, around, around the corner. So uh, Each letter concludes with the uh, admonition that, uh, to hear what the Spirit says to the churches, meaning they, would, they should pay attention and apply anything that is relevant. Key verse, uh, Revelation chapter 2, verse 1. Uh, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and who walks among the seven golden lampstands. All right, a refresher. Who, what, what are the seven stars now? A refresher from last week. The seven angels or the seven cities? Yes, uh, the seven cities. Yes, seven stars were the seven cities, and um, and the and the and the, la la the golden lampstands. Morning, folks. Good morning. The, the the seven golden lampstands were like the messengers or or, or the angels. Yeah, the angels or messengers that were that were that were sent to these uh, to these cities. So. Uh, number one, Ephesus returns to uh, Ephesus. Refer return to first love. I don't know what I'm seeing. When I when I, when I lately when I've been reading, I sometimes I may, I don't know why the letters been looking different. So <laughs> and then I gotta read it differently or look different. I, I might I might need glasses. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Pushing sixty. All you over sixty might might know. <coughs> <laughs> I, I, I get it. Yeah. Just saying. Um, three sections here: commendation, uh, revelation, and, and uh, rebuke. Commendation, rebuke, and revelation. Chapter two, one through seven. Read them all. Chapter two, one through seven. Jan. Okay. <clears throat> See to the angel of the church in Ephesus right? These are the words of him who holds the seven stars in his right hand and walks among the seven gold lampstands. I know your deeds, your hard work, and your, your perseverance. I know that you cannot tolerate wicked men that you have tested those who claim to be apostles, but are not, and have found them false. You have preserved and have endured hardship for my name, and have not grown weary. Yet, I hold these things against you. You have forsaken your first love. Remember the height from which you have fallen Repent and do the things you did at first. If you do not repent, I will come to you and remove your lampstand from its place. But you have this in your favor. You hate the practices of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He who has ears, let him hear. But the Spirit says to the churches, to him who overcomes, I will give the right to eat from the tree of life, which is in paradise of God. So what was he telling to these people here? Your first love is most important. What is your first love? The love of Christ. So when, uh, well, Ephesians, uh, Chances are he's talking about when 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 Paul had been there talking, bringing Jesus. So mm -hmm. I imagine 
between between the time of Paul being there and then uh, when John was talking about him, I don't really know how much time would have been would have lapsed, but they probably would, you know, some probably went back to their old ways. So. Well, you know, they love God, but you get involved in your church and you do this and you do that, and you forget to read your Bible. They didn't have their Bible then, but I don't want to go to prayer today. You know, mm -hmm. they still are with Christ. But they're not, they're losing their first love. Their first love was Christ himself. Mm -hmm. Then the church comes out, you know. I, I asked a lady, you know, well, from the Catholic Church, sorry to say, and I said, well, what came first, the church or Jesus Christ? She said, the church came first. Hello? Wow. I said, how in the world can the church come first? When Jesus established it, when you're following Jesus. And she looked at me like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. But your first love is for Christ. Yeah. And then you, you have a little body, and then you, you have missionaries, and you have potlucks, and you have this, and your Bible study, and your children's church, and everything. But you still have to stay with your first love, which is Jesus Christ. Well, you know, too, I think the, um, you know, the, like kind of what Jan was saying, it, it, it applies to us personally as well because obviously these people were in Christ and they left it. You know, I had done that um, mm -hmm. for, ten, you know, some years. I'm sure many of us, I know I Yep, and I, I'd be totally transparent, you know, I'm not going to say that there's been times throughout the week that I have felt like, hey, you know, uh, you need to get your priorities straight again. Mm -hmm. You know, I find myself throughout the day, like, what, what's missing? And I know it's missing, <coughs> you know. Even though I might have been reading, I was reading. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't absorbing. But anyway, bottom line is, and it also speaks to, you know, because he's going to remove their lampstand if they don't come back. <coughs> that kind of applies to our salvation. You can lose your salvation. Sure. Mm -hmm. So you've got, you got to be really, really careful. So again, you, speaking to the church, mm -hmm. but we are the church, so he's speaking to us personally too. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because <clears throat> there are uh, things out there in the world that try to get our mind off of what what uh, what, what God's all about, right? Right, oh man, yeah. You know, God wants us to be unified, not, not, uh, not, not being their own island, you know what I mean? Like, um, we're supposed to be all for number one, and, and if I'm number one and you're number one, we're not going to get nowhere, right? No. You know, so we're, we're, we're supposed to be in the here mud. for one another, right? In place we're going to get in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so, uh, so let's see here, it says, uh, they had refused to pick up with wicked people among them, Furthermore, they had tested and exposed false apostles in their midst. And years before this message, the Apostle Paul warned the Ephesian elders that they would face such, such challenges. So, so people are going to come in, try and separate, <coughs> try and separate the truth from, uh, from us, you know, what, what God wants us to know. They're doing that now. Yeah. And that, that, yeah, you're right. They're doing it. That hasn't changed in 2,000 years. Um, Quick thing on this Nicolaitans or Nicolaitans, whoever they are. What, what, <laughs> what's, 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 what's going on here with these people? What, why, why were they mentioned? They don't believe in, they're not sure what they believe in. <laughs> mm -hmm. But they were, it sounds, it sounds like they were a, a, a group of people. The claim. That, that, that um, want to uh, incorporate other, other, other um, means of worship into, into Christianity. Kind of like what's going on today. Yeah, trying to mix the world religions. The church. And, uh, and that's, God says don't do that, right? Don't do that. You know? Yeah. Because uh, they, 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 somewhere, um, it, uh, they were re uh, referring the Nicolaitans to, to Baal or Baal PR or whoever when when they were mixing um, the blood sacrifices 
in, in, with the sacrifices of the Jews. Mm -hmm. and, and, and God says um, not to, you know, you're not supposed to mingle blood with, uh, with, not on with, my your, watch. with your sacrifices, <laughs> you know. So, so that's, you know, um, don't, the, the main thing is just stay on track with what God is telling us to do and, and, and not to do, right? Shmurna, number two, remain faithful, commendation, the promise, and the rebuke. Uh, let's see here. Is that the re oh no, it's just the two sections on this one. Chapter 2, 8 through 11. Just a few verses. You got that, Arlene? To the angel of the church in Smyrna write, These are the words of him who is the first and the last, who died and came to life again. I know your afflictions and your poverty, yet you are rich. I know the slander of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a sin God of Satan. Do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you, and you will suffer persecution for ten days. Be faithful, even to the point of death, and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes will not be burned at all by the second death. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're all familiar with the, that last verse still, the second death. What's the second death? Mm -hmm. Judgment. Now for eternity. Yeah, judgment. That's when that's when the books are open, right? Mm -hmm. That's the final one. <laughs> yeah. Verse nine, I know your tribulation and your in your in your poverty, but you are rich in this and the slander of those who say that they are Jews and they're not. They're a synagogue of Satan. So here in Smyrna, there sounds like um, Satan's creeping into the synagogues there still. Yeah. You know? Now we're going into churches that Paul never, well, I don't know if he'd never been to them, but he never wrote about them, so. So I, I, but I would imagine if you have a map of, of if, you're, if you're, my fire Bible has got a nice little yeah, map right here. Yeah, has got a nice little map right here, you know, where it starts at Ephesus here. So, so they're going up north and down through it inland. So these first uh, uh, few, few, few cities are on, on, on the sea there. So they're coastal areas. So, so they, they would have, I imagine ports and many people coming uh, in and out during, you know, during uh, um, on their shipping routes, mm -hmm. you know, trading goods and whatnot. So, so these are probably pr pretty prominent shipping sh shipping centers, and um, and they, they each have their own own. Uh, quote, gods that they worship, right? And um, let's see here, it says, I want to read this. The ancient city of Smyrna was also an important coastal city. Smyrna was built partly on a hill topped with temples and other important buildings called the Crown of Smyrna. Uh, the city was later destroyed, lying dead for over 300 years before being rebuilt. It then included the, a temple to the Emperor Tiberius, making it an important center of emperor worship. So they worshiped at just about anything that had rule over them, it sounds like, huh? You know, it's kind of, kind of, it's kind of a contrast. I'm going to say something here. I'm thinking out loud. Um, but, you know, again, we're talking about metropolis areas here. Mm -hmm. um, and it almost, it almost tends to be like that still in the world today where, you know, you get into cities, the bigger areas, 
<coughs> and you're going to get a lot more. Or I don't know. It seems like people lose their mind or something. You know, sometimes too much commotion. You know, when, you get out, you know, when you get out, you know, all the way from the all the hubbub in the city life yeah. and everything, it's like I don't know if it's a different if, world. If we just live in a different, well, you know, yeah. down to earth world <laughs> kind of thing or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, um, you no. Know, granted, there's just a lot of uh, garbage stuff going on right here in Prudenville and Brayling and Rock Island. I'm not saying that it doesn't, but I'm just mm -hmm. saying that um, you know, whenever you get again, kind of Tower of Babel. Yeah. Whenever you get people congregating, it seems like they devise ways to to commit evil. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's just sure. that the human nature takes over or something. Um, nothing against cities, but it just seems like it. You know, it, maybe it's because it gets more oppressed, more angry. I don't know. But you know, another thing that hits me about all seven of these, David Wilkerson says it very often when he talks. But you know, look at throughout the Bible, and, and here's seven perfect examples all in a row. God never executes judgment or correction, basically, without warning first and giving you a chance. Yeah. He never just flat judges. Yeah. He always gives at least once, if not more. <coughs> But he's doing that in seven rapid times here, in, you know, like rapidity, where he's just saying, sure. "Hey, here's what's wrong. Fix it." Yeah. But if not, here's the result. Yep. That will be that. The last verse there, second death. Yeah. Yep, that's the result, isn't it? If we don't listen to what God has to, I see a hand. Bruce, I, I, I think in, in contemporary terms, idolatry today. I mean. We ascribe worship is a describing work to something, you know, and giving it a place of deity, recognizing it as deity. But I think sometimes, in a secular sense, we ascribe worth to too many physical things. Mm. You know, you go to any uh, any port today, and you're going to see you know big banners with the name of the company who owns it up there. Mm -hmm. um, the tools are manufactured by this company, and they have a big label out there. And <clears throat> we have a boat, and it's all about our big boat. Or uh, how many guys on the back of their truck have their snowmobile yeah. plastered on the back window of their vehicle? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's like, and then they we consume a lot of time and energy and money in, in those things so and so that we can't even go to the place of worship mm. you know again it's nothing wrong with having fun or doing a good job and all that kind of <clears> stuff <throat> but at some point we maybe go overboard secularly um, which I think then becomes a stronghold spiritually too as well so I mm -hmm. mean it, what is an idol today mm. yeah that's a that's a good question what is an idol today it's anything that we put before God isn't it it doesn't matter what it is, you know. Could be, could be a, uh, if you're, if you're in the arts, you know. Could be your art, whatever art it is, you know. Could be like you mentioned, a snowmobile or or, or boats, you know. Could Our be. TV set. Could be my TV. <laughs> Most of the time doesn't work. <laughs> That's just nap time for pastor. Yeah. You know, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's usually you know I can watch a program and then I fall asleep too. You know it's. Uh, it's nothing new anymore, you know. <laughs> but I'm always up chastising mom's TV show. I'm not chastising it, I'm just... Uh, Judging it. I'm going yeah. to I guess mom can get away with yeah, that. And I'm sure I'll probably hear about it later. And I, when, when, well, I'm not, I might be home for the show tomorrow because I got a, a, a morning appointment in Saginaw, so I might be home by one. But... <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'll come home and sleep through it, so. You keep me lying, Mom. <laughs> we got two more sections to go. You guys are split up in four sections today. Pergamos, holding to the truth, commendation, uh, rebuke, and promise. Three sections in this one. Revelation chapter 2, 12 through 17. Jim, you got that, Jim? 
Yeah, uh, to the angel of the church in Pergamum, right? These are the words of him who has the sharp, double-edged sword. I know where you live, where Satan has his throne. Yet you remain true to my name. You did not renounce your faith in me, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness, who was put to death in your city, where Satan lives. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you. You have people there who hold to the teaching of Balaam, who taught Balak to entice the Israelites to sin by eating food, <coughs> sacrifice to idols, and by committing sexual immorality. Likewise, you also have those who hold to the teaching of the Nicolaitans. Repent, therefore, otherwise I will soon come to you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna. I will also give him a white stone with a new name written on it, known only to him who receives it. Okay, now what's this, what's this white stone? What's this white stone about? Anybody know? It fell down from the top of the mountain and rolled all the way down and stood itself up and became a god. <laughs> Is that the white stone? I don't, th I don't think that's... I don't think that's what the white stone is. Yeah. <laughs> that's a good that's a good thought though. But it wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? Purity? Purity? Any um Well it says here, where did where those stones go? Because uh, there was a um when what for, for, for judgment, let's see here. It had to do with with a with a, with a judgment to so see a black stone. If uh, let's see here, the white stone has at least two possible references in the ancient world. First, juries have defendants. Juries gave defendants a black stone if you were convicted, and a white stone if you were acquitted. <gasps> so it has to it has it, it, so if you're being judged, if you were bad, you would get a black you stone. You don't want a black stone. No. And a white stone, you want that white stone, yeah. that way you're, 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 you were redeemed, right? Huh. And this could indicate a promise of blamelessness in God's court. And the second, white stones were used like tickets for admission to a public festival. Oh. So if you wanted to, like the other day, they had that shit dig over at the playhouse, you know, the hippie thing going on. <laughs> so for a ticket, they would give you a white stone if you were to enter in, you know, doesn't really cause. Are you serious? What? You're serious? The hippie thing the other yesterday at the oh, playhouse. Wow. Yeah, they had a hippie fest. So, so it was a 60s, 70s music and oh, thing going on. So. We went right past it, and I told you <laughs> So, so those those hippies of the 70s, they had they had your thing going on. It's a good thing I didn't show up. <laughs> when I was walking the graduation line at the college, uh, I, uh, my graduating class decided uh, that we'd all pass a marble on to President Hennessy uh -huh. as we shook his hand and received our diploma. And we figured after he had about five or ten marbles, he was going to have problems. <laughs> <laughs> it was sort of humorous. Then he stopped accepting the marbles. Uh -huh. you know, that's funny. Huh. He's passed away. He's in glory now. He's probably looking down on all of us. <laughs> so that's the message on the black and black and white stones. We're looking for the white stone, aren't we, guys? Amen. Amen. Thyatira increased in good works. Section four, commendation, rebuke, and promise. Uh, Chapter 2, verses 18 through 29. Jan, you got that, Jan? 18 through 29. To the church of... Thyatira. How do you pronounce that? Thyatira. Thyatira. Yep, that word. That one, okay. Right. These are the words of the Son of God, whose eyes are like blazing fire, whose feet are like uh, burnt, burnt bronze. I know your deeds, your love and faith, 
your services and your perseverance and that you are now going uh, doing more than you did at first. Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerated the woman Zezebel, who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idols. Have been given her time to repent of her immorality, <coughs> but she is unwilling, <coughs> so I will cast her on the bed of suffering, and I will make those who commit adultery with her suffer intensely unless they repent of her ways. I will strike her children dead. Then all the churches will know that I am who he who searches hearts and minds, and I will repay each of you according to your deeds. Now I say to the rest of you, and the yes, to you who do not hold to her teaching and have not learned Satan's so-called deep secrets, I will not impose any other burden on you. Only hold on to what you have until I come. To him who overcomes and does my will to the end, I will give authority over the nations and he will rule them with an iron scepter, and he will dash them to pieces like pottery. Just as I have received authority from my father, I will also give him the morning star, and he who has ears, let him hear that the Spirit says to the churches. Well, that one was a little lengthier, wasn't yeah. it? I love the part in, um, first of all, I love the part, verse 24, where it says, I'm right, you know, again, remember Jesus speaking. Yeah. But I say to you, the rest who are in Thyatira who hold to this teaching, who have not learned the deep things of, the deep things of Satan, as they call them, I place no burden on you. Um, Amen. While he's, while he's acknowledging <coughs> Satan's business, he's also diminishing Satan just by that little <clears throat> kind of like whatever they call him, you know, whatever they say kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know. Um, well not totally diminishing him, but you know, basically second place. Definitely second Where he place. Belongs, yeah. yep. Well and he was contrasting from from a few verses before that. But I have this against you that that, that you tolerate that woman, yeah. so that uh, those though he's talking about those people who allow this to go on in their in their lives or or, or around them and don't don't say nothing or, or, or we're like that too, aren't we? You know, yeah. if we if we see something going on and we know it's not right, do we turn our Turn, turn our eyes away and, and, and not think about it and don't want to think about it or I know I'm known known for that do we want to do we want to bring it up and ha make a spectacle of them or us or but it's not making a spectacle is it if we're speaking truth but and, and, now, and, and nowadays they call it um, um, your prejudice because I can't do what I want to do you know well, you think of the United Methodist Church. They have the gay bishops now and the gay ministers. And, and All right, Pastor, that's enough. No. Um, <laughs> and the people still go to that church. Well, I'm not paying attention to him or whatever. But you're allowing that to be in that church. Yep. You know? Yeah. So if, if that was me, I would stand up and get up and walk away. I would not be in that church no more. Yeah. Well, I'm a young Methodist. Well, fine, honey. The name's great, <clears throat> but are you following Jesus Christ or yeah. are you following the United Methodist Church? You know, the, the, you got to pick out what you're doing. Yeah. It's not the denomination. It's it's what's going on in that church. What does it say? It says, choose who, choose who you shall serve. Yeah. 
So according to the, to to my Bible, it's either God's way or 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 the second God death. Way. Way. <laughs> you know. But He gives you plenty of opportunity. And we're supposed to. He gives us time to repent, doesn't That's He? That's that crazy yeah. you know, mercy for you. You know, we may not lead perfect lives, and I know everybody in here is almost perfect, right? <laughs> almost. <laughs> We're, we're working on it, right? We're working on it. We're not going to be perfect on this side of life, right? Amen. You know, yeah. you know so. And, and like, you know, I like it when Pastor says, you know, if I'm saying it wrong, yeah, you gotta let me. Me. Yeah, you got to let me know. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, because even he, you know, or, or you, me, whoever, you know, we think we're doing it right. Yeah. And if we're not, let me know. You know. Well, and then the, the the Christian side of that too is, don't forget, once in a while it's okay to say, "Hey, you did it. it's okay. You did a good job." Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we're supposed to encourage. We're supposed to encourage too. You know, just, you know, like encourage and encourage and mm -hmm. yeah. you know, that's what we're doing. We all mess up, regardless of how much you try. Someplace along the line, going, did I mess up there? Yeah. yeah. Just about daily, huh? <laughs> Just about, no. Yeah, you know, you read the Bible and you say, yeah. it's like he was writing this to me. Yeah. You know what he was. Yeah. You know, and me as every me. <laughs> yeah. So would uh, Peggy want to pray for us this morning? Let us out. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Agreed. Thanks, folks. Now, I don't know what you guys were doing with the speakers up there, but it was almost annoying for a second. Always fire them. Huh? Always fire them. Yeah, where's the, where's the, where's our.